Somewhere towards the end of 2018, Fortuna came out. And Fortuna, phew, it was huge. A vast, icy open world with plenty of stuff to kill and grind. And they also gave us the tools to kill said stuff with. The first ever modular weapons. You guys remember? Tomb Finger, Catch Moon, Rattle Guts. Absolutely bloody insane secondary weapons. And back then, one of the undisputed kings was the Tomb Finger. But a lot of time has passed since then, 2018, 2022, can the Tomb Finger still hold up in today's meta? Today we're gonna find out just that. As always, my name is Lazar, and I got a cheap build set up for you. Something affordable that more casual Tenno can get into, but fear not, we also got the end game set up with Prime mods, Galvanized mods, with a Riven, we're gonna be taking it to Steel Path, basically put the weapon through the ringer. That said though, please bear in mind that my builds and guides usually take a more new player friendly tone, simply because I want anybody watching to understand how the weapon functions and how it should be built. So in case you're a veteran and you already know most of this stuff, you can either skip ahead or have a bit of patience. And with that out of the way, let's jump into the Tomb Finger. Let's begin by checking out how the weapon handles without any mods equipped. And for that, we're gonna do just a couple of our regular free shots. What is the Tomb Finger anyway, Laser? Well, this is a kit gun that you can build down in Fortuna, and you should build it with Haymaker and Splat or Killstream. It doesn't make a huge difference in terms of DPS, simply go for your personal preference. That out of the way, let's see how she performs. This one will be firing a projectile which is on the slow side. Now I'm using the default colors on the gun just so you can see the AoE explosion. It's a pretty tiny one, it's 1.9 meters. But you know what? It's still an explosion that deals radiation damage by default. And this is a semi-automatic shot. This would be the maximum rate of fire. So we got two damage instances. Yes, one, the projectile physically making contact with a target and two, the explosion. And I know the particle effects are weird on this one. It's not my colors, it's simply what D did with it. So there you go. Outside of that, the reload is pretty decent. And you can't really call this one one of the best weapons in terms of usability either. Again, it's a projectile based attack. It doesn't move that quickly. It's a semi-automatic trigger, but Let's take a look at stats to see exactly what we're dealing with. Accuracy is 50. As long as you can aim, you're gonna hit your targets. It's as simple as that. And you should always try to get the damage from the explosion as well. Now, the damage layout is roughly 50-50, give or take. So, yes, you should not aim for the feet with this one because you're losing more than half your damage. Fire rate is 2.17. Fantastic, fantastic. Magazine of 23. Reload 1.7 seconds. Alarming Riven Disposition of 1 out of 5 because this is still a very popular weapon. And I can't possibly recommend Riven's for this but one weapon. It's as simple as that. Keep in mind that the stats will depend on how you build your kit gun. Again, my recommendation, you go with Splat, Haymaker, or Killstream depending on preference. Let's take a look at damage. Haha, <laughs> critical chance. 38% by default. That is absolutely bloody nuts with 2.3x critical multiplier. Status is on the low side, only 16% impact puncture and radiation damage. Now, the radial attack, as you saw, is 1.9 meters, so sadly, Prime Fulmination only brings it up to 3.15. It's not really worth it. And the falloff, thankfully, is small at 30%. One thing that I didn't mention, however, in the earlier presentation. This one has a guaranteed impact proc. Yes, my friends, guaranteed impact proc. That means we're going to be going with hemorrhage on this one and we're going to be getting ourselves a whole lot of slashes on our targets even though the weapon doesn't have slash. Just keep in mind the rule of hemorrhage. We want to keep our fire rate below 2.5. By default, it's 2.17. Normally, on secondary weapons, lethal torrent is a no-brainer, right? This time, not so much because it's going to bring that fire rate over 2.5. So bear that one in mind. Oh, and if your mod capacity is only 30 out of 30, jump into actions and plug in that Horror King Catalyst. Double that mod capacity. Make it 60 out of 60 because trust me, this is definitely a weapon worth fully modding. Mine has 8 forma because, well, believe it or not, I still need to format it two more times, but more on that just a tad later. When it comes to arcane slots, well... Uh, you have two for this one. You have your special kit gun arcane and you have the normal secondary arcane as well. The arcanes you're going to be using will depend on the build you're going for. If you're going for a slash build through hemorrhage, which I'm going to be showcasing today, you might want to consider secondary merciless. If you're going for a raw strength, big bada boom damage approach through something like corrosive and heat, secondary deadhead is definitely a good idea. And if you're going to be using it in tandem with your melee weapon, Melee, yes, I know. Go with secondary dexterity. Now, for the 
the other arcane slot this one also depends pack seeker is fantastic if you're going for corrosive big bada boom raw damage but if you're not if your targets are going to be dying under the effects of slash and viral go with pack charge as for the arcane uh excellent slot well this one is not worthless at all considering how sluggish the weapon feels because that's basically the biggest con that and the look lethal momentum is a no-brainer go for this one man 40 percent projectile flight speed will make it a whole lot more streamlined as for the second negative the fact that it looks like it does well adding color to it is simply not enough thankfully we can use a nice skin on it there you go we're gonna be using the zundi pistol skin for the remainder of the review now let's talk about a standard cheapo ordinary uh, casual player friendly setup that's a mouthful damage with hornet strike multi shot with barrel diffusion critical chance and critical damage for the use of creeping bullseye and as well as target cracker now when it comes to critical stats you have a choice between Pistol Gambit 120 and Creeping Bullseye 200, but Creeping Bullseye takes 20% fire rate away. And you're gonna say, fantastic, dude, because I need lower fire rate for hemorrhage. That means I can use, whatchamacallit now, uh, whatchamacallit, whatchamacallit, yeah, Lethal Torrent. Wrong, you can't use Lethal Torrent, sadly, simply because that with Lethal Torrent, it goes to free, and we need to keep it below 2.5. So that's a bit of a bummer. Now, this right here is your option slot. Plug into this one whatever you feel comfortable with. For example, you can add some more flat damage, if that is your jam. Ogre Pact, 90% more flat damage. Honestly, this is not a fantastic mod. You should use this one if you have nothing else to plug into this one. Sack some spittle for more impact. No, I don't. No, God, no, please, no. Simply because you got guaranteed impact procs for hemorrhage, so you don't really need sack some spittle. Sin charge doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. You know what? You know what? Go for another 60-60 mod. Again, assuming you don't have the fancy mods, the white mods and the galvanized mods or a ribbon or something like that. So a little bit of heat, never hurt nobody. You got vital on the weapon right now from Frostbite, Pistol, Pestilence and Scorch. And we're going to be testing out the weapon like so. And in the excellent slot, if you can fit it, lethal momentum. If not, you know what? Just leave that one locked. We gotta check to make sure... Oh, corrosive projection, that would skew my test results. As for Void School's Naramon... If you want to skew your test results, you can go for something like Madurai. We're going to be respawning the targets 120. Look how good it looks now with the skin on. Looks like a whole lot better. We're going to go for headshots as per usual, my friends. Now, you only need to put in a couple of shots. Look at that. Look at all those procs, man. Absolutely, that's a one shot on that target. Beautiful. Absolutely bloody fantastic. Plenty of impact procs to generate those slash procs absolutely freaking insane the one problem with it you see it right it's slow it's sluggish it's kind of eh from this point of view so if you prefer a faster weapon you can go for a little bit of fire rate and forget about the slash bottle and go for corrosive but i wouldn't really recommend it in terms of efficiency this is maximum fire rate right now with this build oh by the way in the excellent slot minus recoil would also definitely be a fantastic idea but as you can see, my friends, with a normal average everyday build, it absolutely chomps through high-level targets. And this concludes the uh, casual, friendly portion of the vid. Now, you're not a casual. Let's be honest here. You got everything you need, buddy. So you're looking at something like... Well, oops, forgot. Like this. Three Prime Mods, one Galvanized, one Riven. Rivens, again, are not worth it. I'm simply using this one because I have it. Look at that negative. Fantastic. Minus 47 project projectile flight speed because i'm a masochist like that multi-shot critical chance damage plenty of flat damage on this one take a look at the values considering it's only dispo one they seem awfully high for dispo one now don't it pax charge with secondary merciless we talked about this earlier we're keeping hemorrhage on 260 60 vital mods galvanized diffuse instead of the normal version now i have prime expel mod <sighs> I hate these bloody things. I know I mention it all the time, but I gotta keep hammering it in. Hopefully the developer will do something about them. It's not that they don't bring a whole lot of power. They do. Right build, right setup, right circumstances, yada yada. But they're such a pain to actually max. All of them out, swap them in from mission to mission. You know what? You know what? If you don't like the Bane mods, go with Hornet Strike. Whatever. Go Hornet Strike, go another 60-60 mod. It doesn't really matter. You don't need to go flat damage because you got plenty from Primary Merciless. And in my case, the Riven as well. But for the sake of efficiency, here you go. And you might also say, hey, Laser, hold on there a second. Isn't it smarter to go for Creeping of the Bullseye instead of Prime Pistol Gambit? Mm, not really for 13% critical chance. You want to nuke 20% fire rate? I want 2.17 anyway. I would go like so. 
All right, one more time. The crop that have goons level 120. There's a huge difference now. Of course, you're gonna have to get a couple of kills until the build is in full swing because of the galvanized bits. One. It's dead. It's dead with no stacks. Now, of course, some of you fantastic people are already saying, hey, hey laser galvanized aptitude, or uh, what's it called? No, no, galvanized shot for secondary weapon. That's it. Why aren't you using that one? Well, my friends, that one doesn't apply to the explosion, right? So while you will be getting the status chance extra, and you will be getting the damage increase extra from the projectile making physical contact with a target, you won't get the damage percentage extra for the actual explosion. In my, from my humble point of view, it's not. Perfect, but take a look at that 55,000 slash from a single shot on the target. It one shots like nobody's business. It's absolutely sensational. And you're gonna say, dude, standing still targets in the simulacrum. <laughs> Alright, steel path time. Say cheese. And there it goes. Give me more. Give me more. One shot on that one. No procs, no anything whatsoever because the EHP on those targets is not exactly fantastic. But thankfully, we got a corrupted heavy goon. Is that an Eximus? Was it an Eximus? I don't know. It's got procs on it. Turning around to fight other enemies simply because it got that radiation proc on it. Which basically acts as a form of super duper crowd control. My friends, it one shots like nobody's business. It doesn't care. It's hella powerful. The problem with it, again, is on the sluggish side so if you prefer agile quick weapons that feel a whole lot better in actual gameplay then this is simply not oh hello i made a big pile it's not a weapon for you but if you're cool with a more slow and precise kind of gameplay style you're gonna be loving this one no questions about it gone 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 even through the damage mitigation of the little drone there. No problem whatsoever. Now, of course, we can do a bit better than this. And, of course, by a bit better, I mean a lot better. With some more frame buffs and synergy. So, back to the simulacro. Right after we kill this guy. Wow, beautiful. You too? Fine, you too? The ever so lovely Lady Mirage Prime and her outstanding buffs. But, of course, we need to fix the fashion there. And kaboom, beautiful, beautiful. Man, I love this weapon skin. It's a subjective thing, I know it has nothing to do with the review, but there you go. Corrosive projection against heavily armored targets, who the funk it? This used to be a whole lot more powerful, but you know what? If your build calls for whatever aura you desire, simply go for this one. Corrosive projection is a good idea, but it's not 100% mandatory. If the aura is that relevant to your build, don't forget about co-action drift that goes right here. When it comes to Arcanes, these are a lot more impactful. We can go with Arcane Avenger R5 on damage, 21% chance for 45% critical chance for 12 seconds. This is a bonus additive after. It simply doesn't care about the base critical chance of your weapon. And what makes it so powerful it applies to primary, secondary, and to your melee at the same time. Thumbs up for this one. Farm it from the third Eidolon down on Cetus. Your second arcane honestly should go to your Warframe, something like your Energize or whatever else you guys deem worthy at the time. If you want to go for more raw damage, you can go with Precision, it's not really necessary, but you know what they say about Overkill? There's no kill like Overkill. So we're gonna go with Arcane Precision, even though we don't need it. I mean, at this point, we're already one-shotting, you don't need Warframe buffs, but there you go. As for companions, go with a Volpophila. This will give you those Miami Miami viral procs. The problem with the Volpophila is not as reliable as your weapon. So sometimes when you need the viral proc, you're simply not getting it. But go with Volpophila, and on your weapon, you can build corrosive instead of viral instead. So you can have corrosive, heat, and viral, which is absolutely fantastic. Now, the Corrupted Heavy Goons, level 165. This is the highest I can spawn. I don't get why they're not letting it spawn a couple of thousand in the simulacrum. Maybe people wouldn't play Steel Path if we did? Ah, who knows. Activate and power for Mirage and her free ability Eclipse for an absolutely outstanding damage increase. And one more time, for one of the best animations in Warframe. Her ever so lovely, beautiful clones. Shot by shot action, because anything else would be waste of... Oh. Can you hear the thunderous roar of this gun? My Volpophila is on the floor, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And the thing is, these are one-shots by the raw damage alone. You don't even get to see a proc, a slash proc. You don't get to see that. You get to see some red numbers, and then it vaporizes. It's that powerful of a weapon. It's pointless for me to say, hey, I recommend this weapon. Obviously, you can... Oh, you can see for yourself the weapon is absolutely hella powerful. Is it... 
One is a subjective matter. To me, the Tomb Finger is not really all that fun because of the sluggish playstyle. But if that doesn't bother you, you're gonna be loving your time with this weapon. As always, my name has been Lazar. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like, favorite, share, and subscribe only if you enjoy the content. And you can also catch me on Twitch, Facebook, Twitter, all the usual places. Oh, one last thing. If you love the content and you want to help me keep making it, please consider supporting us via Patreon. Link in the cards right now. But until next time, my friends, bye-bye.